Hello everybody, it's Pastor Alex Alcido, and I'm thrilled and excited to be able to do this quick class on water baptism. As you know, in our church, we're having baptism this Sunday, and I'm sure we can use this for all future events. Baptism is such a blessing as it is an outward manifestation of something that happened inside of you. Praise the Lord. It's not just a ritual. It's not, uh, I've heard people say, you got to do it because it's an act of obedience. Yes, it is an act of obedience because we were commissioned by our Lord Jesus Christ to do and to be baptized. But you have to understand why you do it. Not, if I, if I do it, I'm being obedient. It all starts during the Great Commission when Jesus Christ died and he rose from the dead he met with the disciples and shortly before he he he's, he's lifted up to heaven uh, once and for all a conqueror in the gospel of matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20 the bible says jesus came and he spoke to them all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth and now that i have all the authority he says Go and make disciples of all nations. Make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you even to the end of the age. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so what we understand here immediately is that as Jesus commissions his disciples, he's, 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 that's it, he's leaving. He's going to go sit at the right hand of the Father in the place of authority. Now I need you guys from this point on, I need you to go into all the world and make disciples of all mankind. He says, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them. So all this is part of Christianity. Water baptism is an, is an outward manifestation of an inward work of grace. Here is a great creed. I hate to use creeds because it almost sounds like this is what we believe in and this is we stand on that. But it's pretty accurate creed because it is biblical. And this is how the creed goes. It says, we believe that water baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, according to the command of our Lord, is a blessed outward sign of an inward work, a beautiful solemn emblem that reminds us of, of Jesus dying on the cross of Calvary. So we consider ourselves, we reckon ourselves now dead into sin, and now our new nature, our old nature has been nailed to the cross. Uh, and now we have taken on the new life in Christ Jesus. And I kind of paraphrase the creed because it gets too long. But I think you get the crux of the message. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, when he walked the face of the earth. Remember, this is God himself submitting himself to the ordinance of man, submitting himself, setting the, the stage for us. He said himself, he says, I have come here to leave an example for you. So when Jesus' ministry was about to begin, he goes to John the Baptist, which was his cousin, uh, and he goes to John the Baptist and he says, hey, I need you to baptize me. And John the Baptist, of course, says, whoa, 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 I, I'm not worthy. I should be asking you. But Jesus said, no, we need to do this so that the scriptures can be fulfilled. Jesus Christ is uh, baptized. Water closes up on him. And the Bible says when he parted the waters and he came up, uh, the spirit of the whole of God Almighty came descended as a dove. The Holy Spirit is not a dove, but it's a symbol of the Holy Spirit descended and God spoke. Hallelujah. He was baptized. And so after all these things, Jesus Christ uh, was himself and his disciples baptizing people. John the Baptist baptized people. Jesus baptized people. It is in the great commission that we are to do this. We're not just to go into all the world and make disciples, but he says, 
baptize them also in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The Trinity, God, the deity of Jesus Christ, three in one, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, we are baptized in that. We are resurrected into our new life in Jesus Christ. See, this is part of the Great Commission. He said, what did Jesus say to do? Teach them. Uh, whom did he say to teach? All the nations. And what did he say to do to them? Baptize them. Today, in, uh, you know what's funny is, I'm sure now, but back in, in, uh, in heathen days, in days of, of pagan worship and what have you, uh, you know, everything was good if you didn't want to be part of their pagan religion and join yourself to Christianity. But the one thing that they would disown you is if you got baptized because by getting baptized, you were renouncing your pagan life. You were renouncing your idols. You were renouncing your gods. And so it's been said that missionaries that went to India, went to Africa, went to uh, Asia, that anytime people would get saved, that they would wait three whole months before they would get baptized. Now, this is not what the Scripture tells us because we read in the Scriptures that many a times people would be saved and they would say, what must we do now that we're saved? Get baptized, right? So you don't have to wait. But the thing was, uh, the, 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 the point of this is that they would make them wait so that when they did get baptized, they understood, I am renouncing my pagan gods. Here's my, 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 my jewelry. Here are my false talismans and, and, and good luck charms and all this stuff. I don't believe in that no more. I am dying to my old self, to my old nature. I am getting baptized. I am proclaiming what happened inside of me. Now I am proclaiming it outwardly. Amen. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 6 that... Uh, we, in chapter 4 it says, We are buried with Him through baptism into death. That's something very powerful. In uh, Colossians chapter 2 verse 12, We are buried with Christ in baptism. Isn't that a trip? When Jesus was, uh, died and was, was, uh, was in His tomb, uh, he, we are literally dying with Christ. Dying to our old, uh, fallen, uh, sinful nature. Now, Jesus didn't have sin, but the sin of the world was placed on him. So he died. To his, we are in Colossians 2.12. We are buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Romans chapter 6 verse 3 and 5. Don't you know that as many as are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? You are saying I relate to the death of Christ. Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father even so we also should walk in newness of life we're going down i renounce my old religion i renounce my old gods i renounce my old idolatry my old paganism whatever it is you're going down you know what you're doing that's why the missionaries would wait three whole months say hey make sure you're ready to do this are you ready to do this are you ready to do this you that are getting baptized Think about it. Are you ready to renounce your old lifestyle? You can't be casique and no, oh, yes, no, maybe so. This is a serious act, a sacred act in Christianity. That's why Jesus says, go into all the world, preach the gospel, make disciples, baptizing them. Don't just get them saved, get them in church and everything. They have to have a point in their lives where they say, I need to cut some people loose. I need to cut some habits loose. I need to stop playing around and 
with religion. I renounce that religion. I renounce this. And now I embrace everything that Jesus Christ is and everything that Jesus Christ has done for me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me just find a couple of things here. You know, folks, I think the greatest act of baptism is the children of Israel when they came out of 400 years of slavery. I, I love to think about that, that uh, they were slaves for 400 years. God, Jehovah God, has made a way to set them free. And so now they are up against the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army is chasing hard after them. The Red Sea is in front of them. You know, God could have taken them around the Red Sea to some narrow places they could have crossed easily. It, it could have been just so easy if they would have gone around and everything. But God took them right down the middle. You know why? Because He wanted to baptize His people and that they would die to their old slave lifestyle to their old slave master and so as the children of Israel all go through and you know the waters are parted they all go through and when the wa waters close behind them folks Pharaoh and his armies were killed were destroyed and it is such a picture of baptism imagine from now on we don't have to go back to our slavery. We don't have to have our old slave taskmaster. Now we have a God. Now we have a loving father. The Bible says that as they went from that point on, this, this, this symbolic act of baptism, when they went through there, you know what, folks? The Bible says that the, 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 by day, there was, a, there was a cloud. That was a cloud of the Holy Spirit that would lead them. By night, there was a pillar of cloud, a huge pillar of cloud that would guide them. They, you know, baptism ended that dark, dark episode in their lives. And just, wow, we have a whole new life to look forward to. We have a whole new family to look forward to. The Spirit of God was now leading them. God, Jehovah, was now speaking to them. It was a glorious thing. So baptism, yes, it is an act of obedience, but there it is so much more, brother. This Sunday or whenever it is that you get baptized, when you go down there, your heart might be pounding because I'm literally just saying, I'm done. I'm dying to all this. I am dying. And you know that when those waters close up on you, you're, for that moment, for the brief second that you're underwater, you are literally spiritually dying to your old nature, to your old religion, to your old habits, to your old beliefs, to your old God. And when you come up, like Adam, the breath of life enters you. When Adam took his first breath, he breathed in the Spirit of God. And so when you part those waters... You will breathe in the Spirit of God and you will experience God in a way you've never known. And I take you to one more scripture that I do want to close with. One of my favorite scriptures. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. When you resurrect, you will now experience the grace, the unmerited, undeserved mercy of God. The grace, when we talk about grace, we're always talking about Jesus and the sacrifice of the cross. When we talk about grace, we're talking about a supernatural empowerment of God. Now that we have been resurrected into our new life in Christ, we can experience the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the love of the Father. The, the sin, the world, religion didn't love us, 
religion gave us all these rules and regulations like Pharaoh did. But God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son that if you would believe in him, you would not perish but have everlasting life. And finally, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. That is what baptism is all about. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, friend. I encourage every one of you watching this video to get baptized this Sunday. Whenever there's a, your church has baptism, sign up right away. You know what it's about. Share this video with anybody that's thinking of getting baptized. Um, and, and, and you know what? You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait. I'm going to tell you something that I want people to know. When I met my wife, when I knew she was the one, I didn't have to wait. I just knew. And when I knew, orale, let's get married. Let's, let's, uh, I had gotten a good job. Why wait? Why wait? Well, what? If, no, no, there is no what. When I knew she was the one, why wait? Jesus Christ is the one. God the Father loves you. He's the one. The Holy Spirit will embrace you in His fellowship and communion forever and ever. He is the one. He will be with you forever, Jesus said. Isn't that wonderful? And so I encourage you again, saints of God, whether you are in a New Destiny church or whatever church you're in, and as long as it's a Bible-preaching church, when it's time to get baptized, boom, sign me up. Put me in, coach, because I found the one, the rose of Sharon, the love of my life, Jesus, my all in all. Hallelujah. God bless you.